Today I want to talk about something that's really near and dear to my heart, and it's the death of YouTube in Hollywood. Now, YouTube will never die. It's a major platform, but Hollywood has sobered up to YouTube, and not really sobered up. They just never understood the platform in the first place. I'm going to open up several articles to give you a sense. Machinima was an incredibly successful YouTube studio back in the day. Eventually, it was shut down by its owners, AT&T and Warner Media. Disney, they shut down Maker Studios. Awesomeness TV was acquired by Viacom and eventually was shut down. You can see they shut down Go90, which was a huge part of Awesomeness TV's business model. And then I believe they were sold. Let me see. I'm reading the Wikipedia article now. Awesomeness TV was sold for a fraction of what it was originally worth. Sprout, Sprout TV was another YouTube channel group that was rebranded to Universal Kids because it was struggling. They wanted to target older kids because they thought there would be more money there. So we see this Time and again, a successful YouTube studio appears and grows and becomes successful. A Hollywood studio acquires them, and then that studio either sells that asset for way less than what they bought it for, closes it down, or rebrands it into something else entirely. Why does this happen? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I worked for Lionsgate about six or seven years ago, and I actually came in to pitch them a YouTube network. I wanted to start a YouTube network internally within Lionsgate. So I met with many people in their home entertainment division, and I wanted to transform Lionsgate's presence on YouTube. And you know what the executives of Lionsgate at the time told me? Trevor, on a single licensing deal, we can make $500 million. On a single deal, one show. That's how much one show can be worth. That's how much a season of one show can be worth. Okay, maybe not a season. Maybe if you're Game of Thrones, that, it, that it's worth that much. But you'll see a season of a show sell or be traded for $100 million. Easy. Or you'll see a show generate a, almost a billion dollars. When you see the release of a movie, that's a $200 million motion picture that ends up bringing in three to $400 million globally. So please understand me when I say this. That's a single piece of two-hour content. Now, the budget for that was huge. The people they had to hire to build that movie or that television show cost a lot of money. But by spending a lot of money, they end up making a lot of money, and they only had to make an hour or two of content. Now, that's the studio model for how to make money on YouTube. YouTube, very different business model. We don't spend a ton of money to make the content. I literally bought a camera for 120 bucks. I bought a microphone that I'm using right now. You can see the microphone for like $40, right? That's how much microphones cost. And I'm essentially making this content for free. There's nobody else I'm employing. I have a friend of mine who helps me with these edits. By the way, Lucas, thanks, buddy. Really appreciate you. <laughs> he edits these videos and he helps me with the thumbnails. He actually does the thumbnails. So... That's what it takes, right? And he's working for free. You know, he's helping me. He's my business partner. We're, we're working together on this and a ton of other initiatives together. But that's the difference in the business model. It's a huge difference. And so because this model is much lower cost and because 50% of all of your revenue is going to YouTube, there's much lower returns, right? Even with sponsorship revenue, like a single sponsorship deal. I worked for Kevin Hart for a while, Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Network. Like a single sponsorship deal could be worth maybe one to four million dollars. Now that's still a lot of money. I'd love to have one to four million dollars. But when you consider that they were spending a ton of money to make these big budget productions and bring in Kevin Hart, who is a billion dollar personality. When he goes on stage, he's worth a million dollars. There's no returns there. And so the problem with Hollywood is that they're trying to take this model that requires people with expertise who cost a lot of money and put them into a format, YouTube, which doesn't cost a lot of money and doesn't get as big of returns. So in order to create a successful YouTube studio, you have to bring your costs way down. You have to be willing to publish a ton of content. And I'll tell you something, if you're hiring great talent, great talent costs a lot of money. And they're going to cost, you know, eighty to $100,000 or more, $200,000. Some showrunners get paid a million dollars to go and make a television show. So this is the difference. And ultimately, Lionsgate would not partner with me. They would not launch a YouTube network. And I can show you an old presentation I made or two or three, but they wouldn't partner with me. And why wouldn't they partner with me? Because literally they know 
If I spend $200 million to make a movie, I can make $400 million. If I spend $50 million, which, by the way, you should never spend $50 million to make a YouTube channel. I don't care who you are. I would tell you you were an idiot. You should never spend $50 million to make a YouTube channel. But, you know, they, they were prepared to put in $10 million to go, like, launch a series of YouTube channels and hire the staff. And honestly, that's going to cost way more. So there's this huge difference between the studio model and what it costs to run a studio and what it costs to bring on specialized talent, because the studio model has been around for decades, then it costs to run a successful YouTube channel. And if you look at, say, Rhett and Link's YouTube channel, Good Mythical Morning, that's what they're famous for, Good Mythical Morning, they can afford bigger staff and more people because they regularly pull in, you know, a million to five million views a video. By the way, a good thing to keep in mind, a thousand views equals a dollar. Whereas when I go to the movies, a thousand movie tickets, that's like $20,000, right? That's crazy money because you're paying $20 a movie ticket versus watching content for free. And that's ultimately the difference between the YouTube business model and the Hollywood business model. And that's why these two things will never intersect and will never work. So is social media going to take over Hollywood? I don't think so. There's always going to be demand for Netflix content, for high-budget content. You know, those audiences may wax and wane over time. Certainly cable is getting hit hard, but cable's not getting hit hard by social media. Cable's getting hit hard by streaming platforms, which cost way less than cable, right? You know, Disney Plus costs $100 a year, whereas cable costs $100 a month. And because of these new streaming services, that's really the threat to cable. And that's why cable is launching streaming services. That's why you're seeing NBC Universal's new streaming service and Paramount's new streaming service because they know that cable is a losing battle. Cable's never going to completely go away. As a matter of fact, we're starting to see stuff like VRV or Verve pop up where now all of the little streaming platforms are getting together to create a bigger platform with a lot of different shows on it. It's essentially turning into cable again, which is kind of funny. But to go back to kind of the main point of this video is... If you're a YouTube studio and you get acquired by a Hollywood studio, you're the winner because Hollywood just paid you a ton of money to buy you out, and you've won. If you're the Hollywood studio acquiring a YouTube studio, you've made a huge mistake because you're going to have to pay all of your staff corporate prices, which means you're going to have to pay specialty staff one to $200,000 a year when a single video can only make you one to $10,000. And even with a sponsorship, if you make a sponsorship, you got to do 10 videos. And that's a million-dollar sponsorship, right? That's, that, that doesn't work when you're trying to make a $500 million movie. So the profit margins are just vastly different because the money you're putting in is vastly different. And because YouTube takes a 50% cut and you're only making, you know, at best case, 10 to $20 for every 1,000 views, when you could be making $10 for one ticket, one movie ticket, $10, right? Whereas $10 is a thousand views and you operate at scale and you're operating a scale that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and hundreds of employees, the answer is already written in front of you. The fact of the matter is studios do understand, hopefully by now, the assets that they're buying on YouTube and it's just not worth it. It can be worth it, but your operating costs have to be significantly lower. You have to pay your talent way less and your talent has to be willing to make a lot more content than they would at a formal production level. So who does this right? Well, really, Rhett and Link, and they're not a movie studio. They're an independent YouTube group, and they, they pay their staff okay, but not like movie studio prices where, like, if I'm a famous actor, I could be making, you know, 10, 30, 50 million dollars a year to do five different films, right? Whereas if I'm a famous YouTuber, I get paid per video, and I'm only making half of that, and then I get sponsorship revenue. And sponsorship revenue is really where the big money is on YouTube, but then you're beholden to sponsors versus people paying for your content. That's why we have things like Patreon, right? We have places where people can actually spend $5 because you have to make up for the fact that you're only getting $1 to $10 for every 1,000 views. So that's the secret. YouTube is not going to take over Hollywood. That's never happening. Social media is never going to take over Hollywood. But it's going to be something in addition to that people watch more of. So if you're wondering, why does Hollywood keep closing these studios? That's why, because their operating costs are much higher, and they have an old business model that they're trying to shove into a new business model. Now, can Hollywood run a successful YouTube channel? Yes, 
but they have to do it the way YouTubers do it. And most studio executives don't have that mindset and don't have that experience. Now, I've actually run YouTube networks for successfully for larger studios. Like you can look up GameSpot or CNET. They're owned by Red Ventures now. They used to be owned by CBS before CBS became Paramount. Those were profitable businesses, but we had to start and stop and we, f we failed at pieces. We succeeded at others. But ultimately what we learned is the way to make a ton of money running a YouTube network is really sponsorship revenue and getting sponsorship revenue. Commerce is just not the way to do it. Commerce is a Google model. Sponsorship revenue is the model and you have to be creating content that your sponsors enjoy and that your viewers enjoy. And you have to be hardcore focused on getting a lot of views. But the fact of the matter is that 50% cut that YouTube takes really holds a lot of people back. And then the fact that CPMs, right, are $10 for a 1,000 views, that holds a lot of people back as well. So you have to be able to produce content at a low budget, and you have to essentially be willing to spend, rather than having a $100,000 production budget, which you can have for a movie, the most you can really have is like a $1,000 budget, and that's to get 100,000, 200,000 views. A Hollywood budget is infinitely bigger than that, and it's going to cost way more than that. But to run a YouTube model, the YouTube model, in my opinion, is very simple. You have like three or four people, you pay them rev share in the channel so everybody gets a piece of the channel. And then as you grow and scale and start getting real views, you can hire in real talent. But essentially you're a startup and every member of that startup has to be willing to do seven to 10 different things. And then when you get big enough, right? It takes like one to two years when you get big enough, that's when you bring in the sponsorship money. That's when you bring in sponsors and that's hard to do. That's a lot of risk to undertake, right? Two years before you can actually start turning a profit. Now, a lot of businesses go through that, but a major Hollywood studio is not going to be willing to do that. They're not interested in long-term businesses. They're interested in businesses that are already successful, which is why they're paying hundreds of million, millions of dollars for these existing YouTube studios. If you were to go and pitch a YouTube network to Hollywood studio, it would be like, ah, great, two to five years. Why don't you come back to me when you're already a success and then I'll buy you out? That's how big businesses work because they don't have the time to undertake the risk or wait for something to be profitable. They need it to be profitable now. So if you're a network that's looking to sell to a studio, make sure you're already successful. And if you're looking to pitch a network to a studio, you can't just have success. You can't just like say, I'm really good and have a ton of experience. You already have to have an asset that they want to buy because it's already generating income. A studio is not going to be willing to take this big risk and spend two years building something new. I know this was kind of random, but this is the area that I specialize in. And a lot of people really think that YouTube's going to take over Hollywood someday. I've been in YouTube for 10 years. I know it's not true because I've been, I've also been in Hollywood for 10 years. I live in Los Angeles. I've worked for movie studios. I know how those budgets operate. It just doesn't compute. It's a different business model. And as long as there's demand for movies, people are going to pay for movies and they're going to watch movies. And I don't think that's ever going to go away. I just think where you buy those movies, that's going to change. Like maybe there's fewer and fewer movie theaters but people are still going to watch movies and pay for movies online. Millions of people do every day, right? They, they'll pay 2 to $10 to watch a movie online. So where you watch the movie will change. But movie studios will never change. They're always going to be around. That's my time. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. I could always use some more subscribers. If you have questions about any of this, I'm always happy to answer in the comments. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.